If you have no clue how much you should be practicing the drums every day, this lesson is for you. But we've got to go a little deeper than that. You're probably asking that question because you're not growing like you feel like you should. Maybe you're stagnating and you're just, you're not reaching mastery on the drums like you know you ought to be. So why is this? Well, without figuring this out, your situation's not gonna change and you'll stay stuck on a plateau. So let's fix this today. I'll teach you a simple practice method, core principle, and a bunch of tips to help you careen toward drumming mastery. This is gonna be a lot of fun. You can do this. Hey, welcome to the Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I'm here to help you become the drummer other people want to jam with, and we do this by teaching you the core non-glamorous skills that get you mastering the drums and playing songs well much more quickly. And uh, hey, while you're here, I've got a uh, free gift for you that I want you to grab. And this is really gonna be your, um, kind of your companion, your next step to what we're talking about in today's lesson. This is my Know What to Practice, three-part practice guide for busy drummers. And the whole system, it's a three-part practice system that's built around just, if you've got 30 minutes a day, here are the things you need to work on. Here are the areas you need to make sure you're hitting because one of the biggest fears from beginners and even intermediate players is, what if there are holes in my playing? What if I'm not practicing everything I need to? Or what if I'm practicing a bunch, but maybe I'm practicing the wrong thing? What if I'm just missing something? And that's a, that's a huge fear. When you're self-taught and when you're learning online, a lot of times you don't have that guidance to show you, okay, here's what you need to be working on. But what I found to be true is that we all need to work on these three core areas and this guide helps you with it. And we're gonna talk a little about this in today's lesson. My goal is to help you shape a practice session here. And what this guide does is it gives you all the nitty gritty specifics of, all right, do this, do that, do that, practice this, make sure you're working on this. And so that's gonna be your next step companion to today's lesson. So be sure to grab it. You can go grab it now or wait until we get through the end of today's lesson. Either way, I want you to have that know what to practice free PDF e-guide, my gift to you. It's gonna help you out a ton. So let's get into today's lesson. So maybe you're not sure how much you should be practicing. Like how, how little can I practice and it still be enough? Or do I need to practice a whole bunch? Or is there too much? Like at what point is it the law of diminishing returns? Um, but so my question for you, and I want you to, I want you to be thinking a lot and asking yourself some questions and uh, have some introspection here throughout today's lesson. Why are you not sure? Why are you not sure that you know how much you should be practicing? Um, let's, let's get a little deeper. Cause my guess is that if you were practicing 15 minutes a day, let's say you're practicing 15 minutes a day and you're reaching all of your goals and you're just, you're mastering the drums, you're just doing awesome and everything's great. My guess is that you wouldn't be doubting that 15 minutes a day because you'd know, well, I must be doing something right because I'm growing like crazy just with 15 minutes a day. So you probably wouldn't be here watching this video. But maybe you're practicing an hour a day. Maybe you're putting in a whole bunch of time and it's just not working. And so you're starting to doubt the process and you end up landing on that, that final question of what am I doing wrong? Like, what am I missing here? And so if that's you, that's, that's what we're targeting today. Um, you know, when, let me, let me ask you a question. When do you feel the most at home on the drums? When do you feel the best at the drums? I know I can answer this for me. It's whenever I'm playing regularly. Like I remember there were days uh, back before I had kids, uh, I was gigging all the time. And so there were weeks when I'd be playing almost every night of the week and there'd be rehearsals on some of the off days. And so I was playing all the time. And then if I wasn't playing on, you know, Monday or Tuesday, I would at least practice a little then. And so I, I had this rhythm of just playing all the time. And so I felt so at home on my instrument. So that's kind of some foreshadowing here that you're going to feel the most confident, the most comfortable on the drums when you're playing them the most consistently. And so whenever I was playing a little, uh, just a little bit every day, that really went a long way. So kind of here's, here's where we want to land here with this. Creating a consistent rhythm of practice that you can stick to is more important than any specific amount of daily practice. Now, I'm not gonna leave you hanging on answering the question in the title. We are gonna talk about that. What I think is the, the best, the, the perfect sweet spot of what is the perfect amount of daily practice time. Because I do, I do have an, an opinion on this. We'll see if you may or may not agree with it, but I'll, I'll back it up with a little bit of research and some of, um, some of my experience with it. But what I also wanna, want you to have in the back of your mind is that what's more important than that is how consistent you are with that daily practice. So let's talk about, let's get nitty gritty here. We're gonna talk about something called the Pomodoro technique. This is a productivity technique you've probably heard of. Um, what we wanna do is utilize 30 minute blocks 
practice blocks, 30 minute practice blocks for optimal deep practice utilizing the Pomodoro technique. This is Italian, Pomodoro is a word for tomato and it originated, um, the um, creator of this technique started it with a tomato, one of those little tomato kitchen timers and so he would focus on a task while the tomato timer ran and then take a break and then move to the next task and so on. So here's how it works. If you're unfamiliar, we'll break this down real quick, but we want to spend the majority of our time talking about how to apply this to our drumming practice so that we're focusing better, we're getting more deep practice. In other words, we're getting more done in less time. That's what this comes down to. But here's how the Pomodoro technique works. Step one, this is four things. Step one, set a timer for 25 minutes. Step two, practice in a focused manner, work on your task, whatever it is, in a focused manner where you've, when you've eliminated all distractions. So that's kind of a key prerequisite. Eliminate all the distractions so that you are focusing for 25 minutes. And then a side note is if you get to the end of the 25 minutes and something still needs work or you didn't finish something, just make a note to come back to it later so that now you can take a break, which is step three. Take a five minute break, get up and do something completely different. And then step four, repeat. And after completing four Pomodoros, take a longer 15 to 30 minute break. So after four of those blocks, that's two hours, then take a longer break before you then go back. So that's kind of the generic how it works uh, applied to you know work, productivity, projects, tasks, whatever. Let's talk a little bit about how specifically we can apply this to drumming. So I really like the, the short burst method because the problem that we run into as drummers is that this is a physically exhausting instrument. And if we sit here just going at it for two hours, Maybe you could do that when you were in high school, and I used to do that. When I was in high school and I had a lot of energy, you know, hadn't had kids yet, I, I was getting more sleep. Uh, I was probably getting nine hours of sleep in high school and college, maybe more than that sometimes. Um, anyways, when, you, when you're getting lots of sleep when you're young and you're 19, you can probably sit there and really practice well for two hours. I felt like I could. And so even when I got to college, I remember my percussion teacher in college telling me to do shorter practice sessions with breaks. And I was kind of like, eh, I'm not gonna do that. I'd rather just focus in and really just knock all this out in two hours because then I gotta go to class or I gotta go to rehearsal. And honestly, that worked okay for me. But what I've noticed as I get older, I'm, I'm still young, I'm 30. But you know, once you've got kids and life is busy, life's hectic, sometimes those longer practice segments, they just don't work so well. And also your brain's more tired. Maybe you haven't gotten enough sleep. You know, when you become an adult, you've got a lot more life responsibility and things begging for your attention. And so it's harder to really focus. Maybe you can relate to that. Maybe you're having a hard time really focusing and just getting locked in and getting things done. And that's where I'm at now in life. Maybe that's where you are. And so that's where this makes a lot of sense. When you do a 25 minute segment of practice, there's a lot you can get done in 25 minutes as long as you just focus on one thing in that 25 minutes. And uh, so what I recommend you do is have three of these 30 minute blocks, each block focusing on one of the three core pillars of drumming skill. Remember when I was pitching that e-guide to you a few minutes ago, go grab that, it's free, it's awesome, it's gonna help you out a whole bunch. In that guide, we break down what are the three core pillars of drumming, the three areas of skill that if you master each one of those, you master the drums. Leave one of those out, you don't master the drums. Those three core pillars are hand technique, four-way coordination, and music. So music kind of encompasses listening, musicality, um, all the skills that come with playing songs well, uh, recording well, playing well with a band. Hand technique is obviously just hand technique, grip, building the chops that we need. And four-way coordination is the mental skills of tying everything together and getting our feet to work. And so if you're doing all three of those things, you will master the drums. You've just gotta make sure you're hitting all three of them and you're practicing the right things within each of those categories which is a huge purpose of the guide. And so ideally, so the whole Pomodoro technique recommends, you know, doing four Pomodoros. So four 30 minute blocks and then a break. I recommend just three. Do just three of them. Here's something really cool that happens. So this creates a 90 minute practice session, which I think is a sweet spot for a block of productive time in your day. This creates a 30 minute session. So you've done 25 minutes, a little break. 25 minutes, break, 25 minutes, break. So that's 90 minutes, a 90 minute practice session that had three little breaks. Technically one of those breaks is happening at the end. Really you're finishing in 85 minutes, uh, depending on how you pace that out. But this is really interesting. Have you ever heard of the ultradian cycle? This is uh, our, our brain's natural cycle, our energy pulsing cycle with our brains and it's how we sleep and it's also how we operate during the day. 
This is something I, I first learned about reading this book right here called Redeeming Your Time by one of my favorite authors, Jordan Rayner. Um, go check it out. Really helpful book for productivity. It's probably the most helpful productivity book I've ever read. And it's interesting how we can apply stuff like this to a lot of areas of life, especially including practicing the drums. And something that he talks about in there is how our brains are wired to focus really well and have high energy for these like two hour wave. You can picture like a wave up and down, up and down. And for about 90 minutes, we're, we're on this upward part of the curve where we can focus. We've got all the energy and all the focus, but then we have to come back down off of that. We're not computers. We're not robots. Our brains cannot highly focus and we can't have high energy all day. Maybe you could when you were 19. Maybe you could when you were three years old. My three-year-old has high energy all day sometimes. I don't know how she does it and I'm so jealous of it. But as adults, we have these ups and downs. We're human. And so what you've got to do is optimize your practicing to utilize that so that you're, you're breaking before the practice and then you're getting into the practice so that that can be your, your energy wave there when you've actually got some energy and focus. And then you're going to be dipping by the time you get to the end of that 90 minutes and you're going to need to stop. What's really interesting too is this is how we sleep at night. The way our circadian rhythm is, it's these ups and downs. And so it's the same during the day. Fascinating. I'm not going to claim to be an expert on this, but go read about it yourself. Google it. This was something I learned about reading that book. And so it really is fascinating. And so I think a 90 minute practice session is a sweet spot because of this. Now, something that's critical here that I don't want you to miss is that in order for all of this to work, you must plan ahead what to practice based on your weaknesses. How do you know your weaknesses? Well, this is something worth a whole series of lessons, <laughs> but uh, at, at its core, um, film yourself playing, record yourself. Um, generally, it doesn't take a whole lot of analysis to know what your weak areas are. Most of us know this. Um, all the time, I'll have new students enrolling in my courses. I have a particular course. It's, uh, it's kind of the best seller. This is so, such a helpful course for so many people. It's called Total Hand Freedom. You can find it on my website. But whenever people enroll, I always tell them, hey, comment on the first video. Tell me what are your goals? Like, where are you at? What are you working on? And that's how people introduce themselves to the, you know, the group of students in the course. And so all the time, people will say stuff like, yep, I got a weak hand. I'm wanting to play songs, but I'm not able to fluidly play around the kit. And so it's always these very clear, obvious things. I don't think it takes a whole lot of analysis for you to figure out that, you know what, maybe I've got a weak hand. Um, so that's what I need to work on in my hand technique portion of practice. You know what? My left foot is just, it can't do anything. <laughs> Maybe I need to work on my left foot coordination during the coordination portion of practice. And then, you know what? I listen to music, but I have a really hard time really hearing and learning kick pattern. So for that 30 minutes of music and listening, I'm just going to listen to the same song over and over again and listen to that kick pattern until it makes sense to me. And so a little bit of self-analysis tells you, okay, there's something to work on with hands, something to work on with coordination, something to work on with music and listening, and write these things down. Write these things down. I have some students, there's a particular student in my, my paid membership community who is literally the most organized practicer I've ever met. It's incredible what he does. And he's got a chart with goals and like things he's working on within each category. But hey, he grows like crazy. And it's not because of all the work I put into the membership and creating lesson content to teach him. It's because he takes action on it and he's organized about it. And I want you to do this too and know, okay, here are my weak spots in hand technique. Here are my weak spots with feet, with coordination. Here are my weak spots with listening and song learning. So here are the things I'm going to target and practice. Knowing that, that's going to help you so much because you have to plan these practice sessions out. They can't be random and haphazard. If they are, you're probably not going to get a lot done. Now, like I've been telling you, the three-part Know What to Practice practice guide tells you specific things to practice to work on hands, a lot of good stuff to work on feet and work on tying the feet in with the hands and playing four-way coordination grooves, and there's a bunch of stuff at the end about music and listening. So literally, it's all right there. You can just pick and choose one thing from each category each day to practice. Um, here's what this all is going to come down to. So if I want to leave you with just two, two main thoughts here. Uh, if there's nothing else you take away from this, here's what I want you to take away. Number one, consistency is paramount. Ultimately, the best amount of daily practice time for you, the perfect amount of practice time for you is the amount you can consistently pull off each day. So yes, I would love for you to do 90 minutes each day, but I know for most working adults, especially if you've got a family, especially if you've got kids, 90 minutes a day is just not possible. It literally just, it might not be able to happen. And there might be some days where you can do 90, but other days when maybe you got to do 60 minutes, you got to do 30 minutes. But hey, if you can set a minimum of 30 minutes, then that at least means that 
you know, if you can commit to 30 minutes a day, that means that you can focus on one core skill from one of those core areas. So maybe Monday, you work on that weekend. You work on weekend fulcrum. Uh, maybe Tuesday, you work on kick patterns with your right foot. Maybe Wednesday, you work on really paying attention to how the drums are locking in with the vocal in that particular song you like. So you just listen to that song over and over again. Practice your aural skills. Practice picking things apart and hearing things in the song that maybe you haven't heard before. And that happens automatically sometimes by listening over and over again and challenging yourself to hear something new each time. What's the kick doing? What's the snare doing? What's the guitar doing? What's the other guitar doing? What's the bass doing? What's the vocal doing? Listen for those things. That can be something that you do for 30 minutes one of those days a week. So the point is, be consistent. Um, it's funny because this YouTube channel is an example of the importance of consistency over perfection and over quantity and over quality because... If you sort my, my videos, oldest to newest, so go to the main page where you see all the videos, sort oldest to newest, you will see some terrible videos. Back when I first started the channel, end of 2016, early 2017, terrible videos. But I posted a video every week, every Friday. Um, I've definitely missed a few weeks here and there, but for the most part, every week. So like 50 videos a year and the channel is, it, it's grown. It grows because of that consistency. And that's the way practicing is too. You know, starting out, you might not feel like it's super high quality. You might not feel like you're doing great, but because you're consistent, you're going to grow. The, I got better at making YouTube videos because I did it each week. They were horrible, but gradually they got better. And thanks to you, the viewers who have given me feedback and helped me out with this. So the more I teach this, the better I get at it. Also, it's interesting, there's a, um, there's a local fitness facility, a local gym here that tells you to make sure you work out there three times a week. That's the minimum, three times a week. If you do two times a week, not consistent enough, you're not going to get fit. Three times a week, though, okay, that's consistent enough because at that point you're averaging every other day. And, of course, if you do four times, five times, even better. But it's funny how you know fitness experts are saying that, too, where consistency is critical. It's more important to work out a little bit every other day than a lot here and then a lot that week and then a bunch that month. Otherwise, you probably won't get consistent results. And so we hear this in different industries and all across the board. Consistency is paramount. So figure out how much practice time you can commit to. Whatever small sliver you can commit to and do regularly, even if it's every other day, even if you're just practicing three or four times a week, find that consistent time you can do. 30 minutes on Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, or you know, two, Tuesday, Thursday, whatever. Every other day, find what works for you. Find your sweet spot. That's really my second tip here, you, here for you. Find your sweet spot and pay attention to your body and your, your mental state throughout a practice session because the goal with all of this is to avoid burnout and fatigue. That's the whole thing with the Pomodoro technique. The goal is to avoid burnout. And it's interesting too, in Googling around researching that, I saw that that was a helpful method for people with ADD also where you have a hard time really staying focused on something. And by breaking things into smaller chunks, it actually makes it easier. I don't have ADD. I won't claim to understand that. But I know for people that have different challenges regarding focus and getting productive things done, breaking it into smaller steps can be so helpful for so many of us. So wherever you're coming from there, that can be tremendously helpful. But pay attention to, you know, am I exhausted? Am I tired? Do I need to stop? Am I just so frustrated I need to walk away? Sometimes you got to break all the rules and just, I'm frustrated with this. It's not coming together. Put the sticks down, walk away for a few minutes, get a drink of water, go like do some stretches or something, walk outside, come back in and then sit back down and you might just have a breakthrough in that moment. I've had students tell me that stories like that all the time where they're struggling with something so they take a break and then they come back to it. Voila. You never know. Sometimes that happens, seriously. And so pay attention to your body, pay attention to your mind. Eventually you do have to stop and there comes a point where it is diminishing returns and more is not better. That's why I think 90 minutes is a sweet spot. And if you want to do more than that, do 90 minutes early in the day, 90 minutes later in the day or middle of the day. You know, if you're crazy and you can put in tons of practice time, awesome, good for you. But break those apart. Don't try to do three hours all at once. Do the three 30-minute sessions here and then three 30-minute sessions there. So you've got two big 90-minute blocks. So you can pace them out that way. Those are my recommendations. So as you go, I hope this has been helpful. I know this has literally just been conceptual, theoretical stuff, but it's all backed by my experience, a lot of research a lot of people have done, uh, what my students have found. And my guess is that you're a lot like many of my students who have had a lot of success with getting organized with practicing. Um, be sure to grab that three-part daily practice guide. That's going to help you out a bunch because I don't want to leave you hanging. I want to give you all the goods, all the specifics. 
that's going to help you out with that. Tell me, and you don't have to tell me this in the comments, but if you want, if you feel so inclined to uh, be held accountable, how much have you practiced over the last month? At least answer this in your own mind. If you don't type it out here, that's okay. But at least answer this for yourself. How much have you practiced over the last month? What does your average rhythm, so to speak, look like? You know, are you practicing three times a week? Is it more like, you know, I got a lot of practice in this week, but not that week. Look back at the last month and be honest with yourself. How much were you practicing? Does that rhythm need changing? What will you do now? What will you do to change it? I just, I want you thinking here. I want you doing some self-analysis, doing some introspection. I want you asking questions about your processes because it all comes back to, you know, what everything I was saying at the beginning of this lesson about if you're not growing like you should, you're stuck, you're stagnating, you're plateauing, something's wrong. Don't keep doing the same thing. That's insanity, right? Don't keep doing the same thing over and over expecting a different result. Something's got to change. The rhythm's got to change. The schedule's got to change. And so shake it up a little bit. Test this out. Test this out, get specific with what your goals are and what you need to work on, what you need to practice, and then do it consistently. And I promise you, you will get results. It worked for me. It's worked for so many of my students. And uh, research tells us that this is the way our brains work. So um, have fun with this. Take this, run with it, go practice, go grow, go master the drums like you are made to do. Be patient with it as always. Know that... Um, it's not practice that makes perfect, but uh, practice is going to make better. You're going to improve over time. And uh, a lot of times it's slow and you don't even tell how much you've improved until you look back months later and you're like, wow, that's where I started. Make videos of yourself all the time. That can be really motivating to look back. But hey, you can do this. I'll see you on the next lesson. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Stay non-glamorous.